Hey, what's going on everybody? Isaac here. This is probably the final video in our Knives to Survive World War III series that I've been doing over the last week or two. And I have been doing a pair of knives from different manufacturers just to, you know, showcase some of their knives. Hey, you can get your kit to go to war or bug out and survive the coming apocalypse and be good with buying from like, you know, one manufacturer's website <laughs> or whatever. It was just a, it was just a fun, fun series to showcase some knives and talk about their capabilities a bit. So today is to show two knives that uh, haven't been in any of the videos because uh, they didn't really, it didn't really work out that way uh, with the, with these brands because I wanted to showcase a folding knife and a fixed blade knife from each of these brands. Now we got two brands in this video because these are the knives that I think I would grab and go in, you know, some World War III scenario here. So, like all the other videos, we're doing the folding knife first. All right, so this is the Emerson CQC 13. We got black G10 handles, pocket clip here, right hand carry only. And we got this nice clip point blade. Awesome blade shape on this, nice and nice and wide. Of course, you got the wave opening feature that's Emerson Signature and also Emerson Signature ergonomics. The grip on this is just awesome, at least for me. If you have bigger hands, you know, maybe won't be the best for you because, you know, this rear aquilion here does you know lock in your hand and there's only so much space you know but i think there's there's a good amount of, of grip space there and you got jimping up the the ramp here to the wave which is a thumb rest thumb ramp if you will for poking tasks if you want, you can get up here as well, finer cuts or point your finger up for like caping task if you want to use this to process game or something like that. It's just, this is, this is my favorite folding knife. It really is. I love, I just love the way clip points look. This is a real, really well done one. Nice deep clip. And the tip isn't like super fine. Like on a buck 110 or something it's it has good thickness i don't know if that'll really show all that well but you can take my word for it i don't think i've done a full video on just this knife i can't remember but maybe i will but uh you know emerson knives they only have the sharpened edge on one side that chisel edge that he's famous for this is a regular V grind. It, they sharpen up very nicely. And it takes half the time because you only sharpen one side. Uh, it's 154 CM steel. And Emerson leaves it a bit on the softer side to aid in ease of sharpening out in the field because he, he makes these knives for people to go out and use them so he wants them to be tough and easy to sharpen so that is the folding knife now the fixed blade knife is uh, something newer to my to my collection and that is my Randall model 14 attack and this is just you know a it's a pretty famous combat knife, survival knife. You know, Randall designed this back in the 50s to be, you know, an almost indestructible combat and survival knife. It came with this lanyard here. Let's take a look at the blade. We got 
seven and a half inches of O1 tool steel. It's a quarter inch thick. It's got a sharpened swedge up here. It's got these awesome, this awesome grip finger grooves here. Some may not like that as well, but I think it's a good size that could fit a lot of hands. Um, it's almost, almost a bit too big for me. Like I can, I can comfortably get my, my pinky resting up on this, this final, um, protrusion here. We'll call it before you get to the last groove and get my hand all the way up to the guard. And it, it doesn't bother me at all. Like it's not, it's not uncomfortable to do that. If I want to flip around and do a cut like this, that they're not they're not sharp enough to poke in and, and bother you if you want to do that and i was apprehensive about uh that des this design because of that uh but they know what they're doing down there in florida at the randall shop they rounded it just enough you can put your you know this part of your thumb in that that first groove there you want to you know got an animal field dress or whatever you want to call it and of course you got double quillion here for combat you know protect your hand no slipping up and now there's enough space in this choil here you can choke up here and get that top quillion up in the soft part of your hand here to do finer cuts now the sheath for this is just, it's just awesome, man. This is the nicest leather sheath I've owned. The nice thick leather. I love that it has a sharpening stone. I can get that out just for, for fun here. I've not used this stone. Some like salmon colored wet stone. Feels like it's two grits, so I guess this side's coarse, this side's fine. Actually, I don't even know if I've taken that out to look at until just now. But you know, nice to have. Put a put a quick edge back on out in the field. Now this model 14 sheath, or I should say it's a model C sheath, they call it, but they, they sell it with the model 14. It has these holes in the top and that is to put this paracord through so you can lash it to gear. The, I mean, these were made for, for military folks to buy. Um, this top one, this is to dangle. Um, if you have like the large military web gear belts, that's for that. Cause this is a generous size belt loop, but I don't know if it's wide enough for those that military web belt that that you'll see and if you were in the military you probably know what i'm talking about um other stuff you know it's, it's to lash to you know your your chest rig and all that stuff so like the emerson knife randall leaves their steel a little on the softer side as well um for the same reasons they want it to be tough and they want it to be easy to sharpen in the field. Uh, I think this is an excellent size for a survival and combat knife at seven and a half inches. Uh, you're, you're, you're doing pretty darn good with this knife. I would trust my life to it as well as the Emerson life of my family too. So that does it for Knives to Survive World War III, at least for now. Maybe we'll see some more in the future, unless World War III comes first. So take it easy, guys. We'll see you on the next video.